City Council meeting in order. And we want to thank our citizens for coming. Thank you all for coming. Uh, we will begin by asking uh, our chaplain, thank you, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, asking our chaplain, uh, Mr. Bill Lennard, to please come forth and lead us in the invocation. Please remain standing and let us together repeat uh, uh, the Pledge of Allegiance to the Flag of the United States of America. Mr. Chapman. Mr. Mayor, and also the city council persons, and to our city clerk, and to all of our members of Tuskegee City, I would like to thank you so very much for all of your cooperation during the last week that we had the Cobble Craft Festival. And we're very happy tonight to have one of our very own uh, young ministers and pastors here in Tuskegee who will be coming to you tonight to bring the invocation of Reverend Eugene John uh, Johnson at this time. Let's welcome. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, our God, our help in ages past, thou who has been good to Mother T Tuskegee, down through the years. Lord God, we know that your hand of blessings have been on this great city because it had to be you. At all the places in the United States of America, you chose Mother Tuskegee to be the site to train the Tuskegee Airmen. You chose Mother Tuskegee to be the site of Tuskegee University. And now only great things have been produced on the campus of Tuskegee University, but great things have been produced in the city of Tuskegee as well. Therefore, Lord God, therefore as your anointing has been in the, been on the city of Tuskegee in the past, we ask that thy anointing will continue to stay on the city of Tuskegee during its present and within its future. We ask, O oh, gracious God, that you will extend forth your hand of grace and mercy, wisdom and understanding, be upon our mayor, the Honorable Johnny Ford, and all the members of the city council, the city government, its municipalities, law enforcement, emergency medical technicians, city government, and everything that it takes to run what we know as the beautiful city of Tuskegee. We ask, O oh Lord God, that you will bless the city, that you will bring forth more industries to continue to come within this city. Bless the city ongoing projects, the projects that has been completed, may it continue to prosper. And Lord God, we want not only prosperity to reign within the city government under the leadership of the magnificent Mayor Johnny Ford, but we want prosperity to reign on its citizens, prosperity to reign on anyone who come within the city of Tuskegee, within their coming in, and they coming out. We ask that the plans such as uh, along, as you get off on exit 38, up until the historic site that honored the Tuskegee Airmen, we ask that that project come to uh, full fruition real soon. And we ask that you bring Tuskegee back to its pride like it has never been before, so that the mayor will once again, as he eloquent do from on every time he say that Tuskegee is the pride of the Swift Growing South. And bless him and the city council and all of his citizens with health, prosperity, and wisdom. These another blessing we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I want to thank Reverend Johnson for that prayer I wrote for him. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody for 
for the Carver. They come and say something else about the Carver. Uh, about the Carver. Uh, let's give them a hand. They did a great job. It was a great, great weather. It was a great weather. I know you are. I'm ready. Always, always a pleasure. As a matter of fact, you know, I know you have one young lady here who's ready. She says she's always ready. And uh, we, we are just excited this year. Because truly, and I want to thank you, Mr. Mayor, and all of your city council persons, and all the town and gown, yes. because truly, this was a magnificent uh, 11th uh, uh, George Washington Carver Festival. And uh, the, the highlights, some of you missed it, but uh, the highlights were, were all day long, from the beginning, from 8 o'clock, all the way until 11 o'clock that night. In here was, I, I didn't believe I was in the, in the right place when I came in here. Uh, at 7 o'clock, all of us were worn out, and Sister Harris was worn out, but I went home and got a few, a few minutes of sleep and then came back in and, and here at 7 o'clock, and they had about 10 or 12 jazz musicians up here on the stage, and I thought I was in Chicago or New York like we used to go up there. And they were jamming in here, Paul Connie and, uh, and uh, uh, the Miller, uh, Florence Miller, and uh, what's the young lady's name out at the... Uh, Deandra Mitchell, Deandra Mitchell. Oh, they were singing Sweet My, what is it, My Sweet Valentine? Sweet Valentine. Oh, they were singing the old, uh, and all of the old time. Yeah. And Paul Connor, look at, we, 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 have, we are blessed to have this talent in Tuskegee. And I'm like the mayor, we need to have this every uh, every month or every something to showcase some of our personnel. Because, hey, hey, you thought you were in, on the strip or uh, somewhere here on, uh, on that night. And people were, there, there were little tables all around, and for those who wanted to, there were, <laughs> chill buckets and uh, 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 water uh, and whatever else. <laughs> and, and it was it was just nice. And peanuts and the light on the table and the table would drink. And it was a beautiful occasion. And that was the, I think, the honor Bobby Owens. Bobby Owens was inducted into the uh, first inductee into the Hall Music Hall of Fame. And we all know Bobby was known from coast to coast. As a matter of fact, I ran into a gentleman down at FAMU, who number one was over the jazz session. And he asked me, he said, do you know Bobby Owens from Tuskegee? I said, whoa, all the way Bobby, he was with the great FAMU Marjorie Hunter, but he was asking about one of our own, Bobby Owens. But I want Mrs. Elaine, Dr. Elaine Heron, to tell us a little bit about this awesome George Washington Carver Craft Festival. The police, police department, the light department, I can't begin to even say a word. All of you as citizens of Tuskegee, you need to give yourselves a hand because this was an awesome day. And, and, and everybody enjoyed the lake. We went to, they drove around the lake to see the beautiful sights of the lake. And I went around a few minutes ago, and it's beautifully clean, looking good, people are fishing. Tuskegee, we own the move. We are the pride of the swift going time. You ain't there, stop there. In the future, I, you, you're going to come after me. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, City Council, City Manager, and all of those to whom I give honor and glory. I first of all want to say praise and thanksgiving to the Creator for a perfect day. day. Yeah. I mean, it was absolutely perfect weather in Tuskegee. We pray for it, Mr. Mayor. Yes, I want you to know that. The uh, chairman of our board has already expressed appreciation, but we really need to say a real special thanks to our city officials, Mr. Mayor, the county officials, Chairman Maxwell, I mean, he even planted flowers for us before the day. Chairman Maxwell and the county and UBT. They were out there every minute, every minute that we needed a new hookup. UBT was there. It, I called it a super spectacular, and that is not an exaggeration. Uh, you, saw, you saw those of you who were there, you saw the parade. We never had a parade like that for the car festival. The parade, the car show, and I want to mention the science fair. I want to say uh, 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 accolades, accolades to Patrick Wallace. You need to watch Channel 6, people. Channel 6 is back on. Get into Channel 6. I saw some little children explaining their science exhibits today. I know Dr. Carver's turning over to you. I know that. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Patrick. And we want to say a real special thanks to the Carver Images. Friday night, we had a reception like you never had before. We heard the voices of former students of Dr. Carver. 
and I want to tell Tuskegee something. Out of that Carver image reception, we agreed that we are going to put together a resolution, a proposal, calling for Dr. Carver to be named a Medal of Honor posthumous. Is that how you say it? Right. We are going to do that before President Obama leaves that office. He will be honored. Dr. George Washington Carver will be honored. Because ladies and gentlemen, every day that you live, you live something from Dr. Carver. Diane Robinson is going to coordinate that with our uh, uh, Carver impressionists, Mr. Paxton Williams, and we're just having a we just had a great time. Now I want to say one final thing, as I said to my seaman friend back here, we had more children participating than we anticipated. I could not even give out the prizes last Saturday because I didn't have enough. Grease my palm. I need you to grease my palm because I've got to give prizes to these students in Macon County. There's nothing wrong with the children, people. The children are beautiful. And I will take five I will take from one dollar to one hundred dollars tonight to help us bring up the bed. But in the meantime, we we're gonna run it for a whole year, Mr. President, Mr. Uh, Mayor, so we'll be doing something and next year we'll culminate the 150th birthday of Dr. George Washington. Right. Thank you. Mr. Thanks. Mayor, before we close out, I know you asked in the one, day, one of the last council meetings that uh, we try to put together something, some kind of jazz uh, session along with the car because as all of you know, this is not just frivolous, frivolously done. George Washington Carver was a musician. That's right. uh, he played the guitar, he played the piano. So consequently, uh, next year, Lord willing, we will have the jazz uh, component that was here that night. That will be part of the celebration next year. So I want all of you, don't miss that as well. As long as we're coming out, because hey, it's awesome. And Duncan Farrowman, but uh, Warren Duncan was the one who put that whole thing together with his jazz music. So your wish, your, uh, what you've asked council purpose will be done. And another thanks to Patrick, beautiful job, and I've seen the program with the science yes. fair and with the, the students, how yes. you interviewed each one. Yes. See it if you if you will. And Diane, we can't thank you enough oh, yes. for all your contributions. And I would like to say too, coming up pretty soon, like Elaine said, we're going to have a corner. We're going to have something to honor Carver's posthumously. But even in the, as we talk now, I'm waiting for the coin to come out that we've designed that will come out with George Washington on it with the uh, Jessup wagon on the back. And I, when that come in, man, you all will be one of the first to get one, okay? okay. It's in the mint right now. Again, to our young minister, Lee. Lee. Yeah, yeah but thank you, Mr. <laughs> Mayor, for allowing him to come. We got a lot of talent here. So not needed for me to be here all the time. We want to use young people who are here in our community to, well, to come in and bless this community of ours. And thank you so much for having me. Thank you. All right, that's all. Thank you. Let the contributions continue. Okay. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Let me give you now, <laughs> Madam Clerk, if we uh, have our roll call, take the three Smith. Mayor Ford. Here. Mayor Pro Kim Haygood. Here. Councilwoman Blue. Here. Councilwoman Whitehead. Here. Ms. Mayor, in the absence, absence of Councilman Lee, we do have a forum for our council. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, we'll now go to our uh, citizens' communications. We heard some. Uh, uh, Dr. Sterling, um, I know we have a public gathering here. Would you like to talk some tonight, or are you not quite ready yet? Dr. Sterling. Uh, let's welcome Dr. Carbs Sterling. He, uh, we, had, we, we, we had you scheduled to uh, speak very briefly. Uh, during our work session, but uh, we uh, uh, let it slip by us uh, and uh, got you were going. But why don't you just uh, very briefly uh, make these presentations to the council members to, to keep. Uh, one of the things uh, for the benefit of the public, we, we, we will not ever, ever give up on our goal to have urgent care for our community. 
there are so many, many people who, uh, and some don't make it in time uh, to hospitals out of our community. But urgent care is something that we are uh, uh, continuing to work on. We are not going to be discouraged. Uh, Sister Harrington knows what I'm talking about. We ran into a brick wall, but we're not going to be discouraged. So Dr. Sterling, uh, we all remember him. He was the first physician uh, medical director at the Thomas Reed Center. He was also the physician when the uh, health authority ran out of money. He put in his own personal money to pay the staff and to keep the clinic open uh, for, for several months. So uh, your commitment to this community has been demonstrated. He and a group of physicians that he has um, uh, gathered together <coughs> uh, met today with the medical clinic board and uh, they are desirous of helping us get extended care urgent care, after hour care, on the weekend, uh, urgent care. Because right now, uh, the, the Thomas Reed Center closes at 12 o'clock, I think, on Friday, and the other one closes at 5, and that's it. Nothing on the weekend. Uh, nothing uh, during the week after 4 or 4.30. So you may not want to go into details tonight until we get further along wanted you to give this information to the council members so they could take it and go through it uh, because at, at some point the medical clinic board will come to the council with a recommendation. But uh, just, um, you may want to share with the public your desire. Good evening, everybody. Uh, Mr. Mayor, city manager, member, uh, city council member. Uh, I'm known as Dr. Sterling. My name is Carl Henry Sterling. Uh, the mayor put me on the spot. And I don't think I would be better ready to address you. In any event, uh, it won't take you long to find out that I am uh, the least eloquent speaker of the evening. Uh, the, my goal met the dream of uh, Air Force in the sense that uh, I'm here to provide uh, health care and um, in a new design, uh, it would be an urgent care center that I would like to have open in the city of Tuskegee between, initially, between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m., five days a week, and four to eight hours on the weekend. Uh, I already have two physicians on board with me and one to be coming probably between uh, July and September, uh, coming from West Virginia. The process of converting into the Alabama license uh, is tedious. They told me now it takes about uh, three to four months. Uh, so that will make four of us uh, taking turn rotation. Uh, my idea is to revolutionize the delivery of care, health care, in the sense that uh, the business of urgent care, if I were to leave it like this, would be you come, uh, make you feel good, uh, providing a shot, a couple of shots, and send you home. But uh, in my mind, I see more than that. While others provide less care uh, for profit, meaning less services, in order to provide only what pays, I myself I would be determined to provide the right care. And it's not the commercial in the air or about myself. Uh, I have uh, proven uh, uh, my position about healthcare already, time and time again in, in this city. Uh, in my proposal, I would have a standalone lab where people would have 
all the lab uh, tests necessary, including cholesterol, all those kind of things which nobody provides around here. You either have to go to a hospital or to one of the centers like LabQuest, LabCorp, those facilities. But I plan to have a lab where if someone goes to their doctor in Opelika or uh, Montgomery and they tell you you come back tomorrow for the test and you can just tell the people I'll have my lab fax the result to you because you would just swing by the center, have your blood test and will fax it over to your doctor. That is if you find the need to continue seeing doctors outside of the city. I would also have x-rays. Uh, we're talking modern technology in the sense that right minutes after shooting the x-ray, I can send it to your doctor in Atlanta if it's that close, New York City if needs be, Oklahoma, wherever. And while you're there, if you are our client, our patients and clients, we have somebody within the x-ray, a specialist, within half hour. So you wouldn't leave the center without knowing whether you have bronchitis, pneumonia, or nothing. Uh, not everybody can read an x-ray for fracture. I myself, although I have extensive background in bones, uh, I don't read well x-ray of the face. Uh, yes, for sinusitis, this kind of thing, but for other stuff, I will need that specialist to read it and give me the result uh, on the spot. I intend to have that. Later on, I may even include the mammogram, but at the start, I want to also have a CT scan that doesn't exist in any urgent care anywhere. Uh, I want to have that, uh, which will, to me, uh, encompass the problem, the uh, situation that we are facing. If someone comes here and tells you they will provide Tuskegee with a hospital within five, ten years, it's a bold line. The process how it stands now would be 15 to 20 years to have a hospital approved. Unless you have a mayor, a senator, and congressman with you in order to hasten the process. In my plan, I envision with everything like a standalone ER, which would automatically force us to have some beds. And if you have a medical center with beds, anybody knows the significance of that. Uh, I plan to have a section which is a wound care uh, where we would do debridement, people with diabetic ulcer or vascular ulcer, all those kind of things. And depends on the, the size of the wound. Some of them require admission or observation four to six hours, or if it is two legs, it would be 12 hours. So we definitely will be closer to have beds than in another circumstance. Uh, I have also some other plan that I um, really wouldn't want to discuss at this point. But bottom line, I want to provide Tuskegee with what you need, not like <laughs> a Steve Jobs said, you don't know what you need until I tell you what you need. No. <laughs> I'll show you what you need, and that's what I want to provide to Tuskegee. The exact needed care, and with that, uh, the city scan that I'm looking at is a 32 slices. If that doesn't mean anything, the one at the center that they never use, the Thomas Reed, is a one slicer. Okay, so uh, in most hospitals you can find a six slicers and sometimes an eight slicers. We're talking all the rural hospital. You have to go to a big center like uh, Pelica to find a 16 slicer. They have a 32 slicer, but anything less than Opelika standard will be a 16 slicer. I will have a 32 slicer. That's in my plan. Meaning with that, I can even bring the people of Opelika, Union Swing, 
even the people of Tallahassee, which doesn't do business for us. They carry people over to their place to have CT scan because they don't want to pay another technician. They don't want to involve the money required to make the machine work over here. So they send you over there and insurance company, Medicare, Medicaid, and others, they pay for transportation. So that's more money in another way. While we can have all those services included in the care that we are uh, providing. So that is uh, my goal, or in a few words. And, and lastly, what is you all's commitment in terms of being willing to put up your own money to get this started? Oh, up to $300,000. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, so um, um, we wanted the public to know that. There will be more details forthcoming. Um, the council members will meet with him and uh, the medical planning board, but he just wanted to give you just a taste of it. And we want the public to know that we have not given up on this issue because truly we met a dead end with the Macon County Medical uh, uh, Authority. We just uh, could not go any further. Uh, they have expressed, uh, uh, the Tallahassee Community Hospital has expressed no interest in providing extended care or uh, after hours care. Secondly, quality of life, which is in the, uh, was in, the, uh, uh, in the Washington Plaza, is not required by the federal government to provide extended hours. Nine to five or eight to five, the standard hours is what they uh, contracted with the U.S. federal government to, pro to provide. However, they were willing to do that if they had been allowed go into the Thomas Reed Center and share that facility with the Tallahassee Hospital. But that request was denied, and the public needs to understand that. And the only reason we are now discussing this issue is because the city of Tuskegee has no other choice. Uh, we went to the county government and the county authority to try to get them to do the right thing of sharing a public facility which we are paying for with our tax dollars and which they are making available to Tallahassee for one dollar a week, uh, a month, a year. One dollar. That's all they pay. And all was being proposed is instead of having two part-time centers operating from nine to five and shutting down, come together. Pool your resources, pool your doctors, your nurses, your resources under one building. That's all we were asking. But still, that you know what, I don't have to say any further. And since it's being televised, I would not say anything further. <laughs> but uh, this man and his group of doctors, and, not, and sometimes that's what happens in these other communities. Doctors put up their own money. That's what happened over in Columbus built a hospital. Uh, so if they are willing to start, uh, we're willing uh, to, to meet with the health, the, um, the clinic, and see if there's some way that we can provide some public support to uh, the Tuskegee Medical Clinic to help these doctors make some urgent care available for our people. Because let me tell you, it's a bad feeling in the middle of the night to have a heart attack or have a stroke, uh, to be shot or cut or uh, just whatever, or one of the football <coughs> players get hurt. And just today we met with Dr. Jenkins, uh, who is in the transition, but is still committed as long as he's here to make sure that students at the university, they don't have urgent care either. And they indicated the day that they Enrollment at Tuskegee is increasing, and they are very concerned about making sure that these students have urgent care before they come here. So uh, we are not going to give up, citizens. Our goal is to ultimately have 24-7 urgent care, and yes, ultimately a hospital. I was with the chairman of the hospital board in Union Springs yesterday, and he told me that 
because the governor is not extending Medicaid, uh, 30 rural hospitals are going to have to close in Alabama. And I asked him, I said, is the Bullock County Hospital going to close? He said, no way, because that community is committed. Now, Bullock County is smaller than Macon County. Hale County, smaller than Macon County. They have a hospital. What's that other hospital in the county you go to? Hale County Hospital, Widawi. Widawi, smaller than, than Tuskegee. So don't tell us that we can't have a hospital 24-7 when we had John Andrew Hospital and the Macon County Hospital. It, it just takes us being willing, Council, to put aside our differences and come together and pool our resources. It's not about money. We have money to spend on everything else we want to spend. This is about saving lives. If President Obama can make affordable care available, then we need to take advantage of it. So thank you, Doctor. Let's give him a hand. Thank you, sir. Do you have a question? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I just want to ask you, I think you mentioned, yes, sir. He, he mentioned, you mentioned 10 to 12, I mean 20 years for to establish a hospital. What is your, your, your time frame, doctor, uh, in terms of what you are proposing? I don't want to brag, but less than 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> well, see, that's the doctor's opinion. I think we can have a hospital today. But at any rate, uh, but we're going to crawl before we walk. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, let's move on with our agenda here and go to uh, approval of the agenda. If we could. Thank you, Dr. Sterling. Thank you. Um, are there any other items to be added? I want to add the resolution for Mr. The Honorable George Bulls, a senior who served our city well and the county well. We have a proclamation, but I want to put on the agenda the resolution for the members of him and also uh, Grace Harris. Uh, we want to put on. Did we lose anyone else? Any other items to be added to the agenda? If not, the chair will entertain a motion for adoption of the agenda as amended. Moved by Whitehead. Second. Second by Moon. Questions, comments, those in favor of the motion, give the sign of aye. Aye. Opposes nay, so be it. We'll proceed now to approval of the minutes for April 22nd, 2014. The chair will entertain a motion. They've been circulated. Any questions or changes? Being none, the chair will entertain a motion for approval of the minutes for April 22nd, 2014. So moved. moved by Whitehead. This is for the minutes. I'll second. Questions, comments? We need a moment to look through the minutes. And if you see anything later, just call it to our attention, call it to the clerk's attention, and we'll catch it at the next council meeting. Call for the question. All in favor of motion, give the sign of aye. Aye. Opposes nay, so be it. Uh, we'll go now to communications from uh, uh, work session. Of course, we heard from uh, the Energy Conservation present presentation by Tom Urban and Siemens. And of course, the city manager is going to advertise uh, that uh, for the public, uh, for public purposes. Thank you. Yes, sir. Go right ahead. Uh, stepping back to the presentation made by Mr. Urban. Okay, great. As I understand, before the, he mentioned that you had done some work at the University of the VA. Yeah. Let's go right there. The VA hospital. Right, yes, sir. Uh, the VA hospital has been a customer of savings for many, many years in our service department. Uh, Lee Warner is our branch manager, and uh, I'd be glad to get you. Yeah, I was going to ask if you could still be helpful to give us an idea of how it worked for them, how did it work out? Now, that was not a performance contract. Oh, that was, again, service work, but we did an excellent job for some HVAC and things of that nature that were a significant impact for the VA. Okay. So I'll be glad to provide more details. I don't have it already to know. Sure, oh, I understand. But they're asking how much you didn't mention that, so it would be useful that we just had an idea of right. they're, they're very pleased with it. All right, so thank you. Thank and, you. And, and other cities that you may be Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? 
Okay. Uh, if not, we'll go now to uh, update on exit 38. Incidentally, uh, today, uh, uh, council members, I met Mrs. Johnson, um, the lady who is going to be developing the Zaxby's. And uh, she and her husband, they were in the process of taking their son to Auburn. And I told her, uh, you all can't be perfect, but I mean, uh, Tuskegee is what he should have done. But anyway, seriously. Um, we, um, she is very excited uh, about uh, the Zaxby's and uh, is anxious to move forward. So we had a very um, a good meeting on last uh, Friday with all of the stakeholders, either on the phone or present. And uh, they are ready to go to the next step. Uh, thus far, we have the uh, Zaxby's committed, the Holiday Inn uh, Express, uh, the service station, uh, Jim Harden, <coughs> uh, uh, well, you all walk there, so we're, I guess just for the benefit of the public, yeah. we are working on Exit 38. Since the young preacher prayed for Exit 38, <laughs> we want to make it, <laughs> we want to make it happen, and he is right. Uh, that's going to be a very nice, <coughs> nice development and something that all of us can be proud of. But uh, we have uh, the three main Anchors uh, committed: the Holiday Inn Express, the Zaxby's, and the uh, and the um, convenience store uh, service station, which will have a uh, huddle house in it or some type of food facility in, in it. So our next step is for um, uh, the uh, city and the, and the uh, development authority to. Um, come up with the seed money so that we can go ahead and tie down the land, uh, get the options on the land, tie all of that up. We've completed the surveys, we've completed the appraisals, uh, we have completed the uh, environmental studies, they have completed the feasibility studies for the hotel, for the uh, sea store, and um, we have um, everyone working together in harmony, in peace and harmony. So, uh, so far, everyone is getting along and working in a cooperative spirit. So that's where we are uh, on the Zaxxon restaurant and the property exchange. Uh, I briefed uh, President Jenkins today uh, that uh, this whole project is moving right along. And the exchange between Tuskegee University <coughs> property owners on the left side of the uh, highway coming into the city. Uh, the university still plans to develop its research park and build its building uh, for Tuskegee uh, Alumni, uh, the Tuskegee Alumni Foundation, uh, Tuskegee University Foundation is spearheading that kind of project. Okay, well, we, uh, uh, we, we have action further down, don't we? We don't need any action. Yeah. That's further down. Yeah. Okay, good. All right, any questions? Uh, I thank all the council members. I want to thank the council members for being there, Mr. Pro Jam, Council Lady Moon, you say this. And matter of fact, why don't we just hear from you all? And what do you all think of this? Let the public know how you all feel about what's happening there. Start with you, Mr. Pro Jam. Exit 38. I'm curious about what uh, we've seen thus far as, as proposed to Acre 38. Uh, I think it would be a major boost for the city, the county, and the entire community in terms of uh, developing something there where there is nothing at our exit. Uh, we're getting a tremendous number of tourists coming into our community, and we're not accommodating those tourists. We're losing a huge amount of dollars uh, at the Convention of Mobile Legal municipalities and talk with people from Tuscaloosa, that's where the convention will be next year. And they were talking about their efforts in tourism, willing to share it. They talked about how much Tuskegee has. And we get several buses coming here daily. And we've got to make an effort to capture some dollars from and revenue from people coming through our community to grow our community. So the development of Exit 38 is the first major step and seems to be uh, well put together working with the city and the county, the Economic Development Authority, and all the partners involved. 
So hopefully we'll all stay on track and it'll be a positive development for the city. I'm in full support of it. That was an informational meeting that we heard information from. And I did check with the league, so as long as there's information, it's in good shape. All right. Thank you. Yes. Yes, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, I've been on this journey a long time since the <clears throat> demolition of the old Holiday Inn, which took about four years. And I, 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 the meeting was so inspiring for me because from the very, very beginning, I never gave up hope. I knew that we, town and gown, would come together and make it happen. The leakage must stop, and it's stopping with us. I'm very, very proud of the progress that we've made. Like I said, it's time to stop the leakage, and it's been a long journey, and it's going to happen. Right. Overall, that leakage is, what, $138 million. dollars money going out of Tuskegee to other areas. Your Honor, your business ladies. But I must say that we had an exciting meeting. Try it. Okay. I must say that we had an exciting roundtable meeting there with the, all of these important people who are helping us to make things happen. And I was so excited to see that your turn of our economic developer is doing such a great job for us, especially for District 2. That's my district. And uh, we want to build up Exit 38. That's an eyesore. It's been an eyesore for a long time. And uh, citizens of Tuskegee have been just complaining and complaining about what are we going to do about Exit 38. So I'm happy now to see that we're going to have something there, some businesses there. If we had the hotel now, we would have some, some place for somebody to stay for this uh, fly-in coming up on the 25th. But right now, we need it now. And see, people can come in and stay and eat, and just people can make money. So I'm excited. Okay, outstanding. All right, so Mr. City Manager, comments? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, as we know, uh, Exit 38 uh, is proposed to be the entrance to, to Tuskegee, to the city of Tuskegee. Well, uh, we're doing our part in keeping the grass cut out there, so it'll look good for people coming in, but uh, uh, it would encourage them to come in. And uh, if, if we get it off the ground, it would be a uh, a star in Tuskegee's hat. So, uh, in terms of uh, further ventures, we can get one started, we, another one is going to come in. So, just getting one is going to be tremendous. Thank you. Thank you so much. And um, in that same vein, uh, Exit 32, as you know, they are renovating the service station out there. Uh, but we don't have sewage at that exit, but that's on the way with that uh, $10 million uh, utility project that's en route to Franklin. And uh, very soon uh, we will join with the town of Franklin in a project and have sewage at exit 32. Uh, sewage is, is basic. If you notice, um, the utility board is extending the sewer line up Chapman James from the bottom up to uh, the corner of Highway 29 and Chapman James. Why? Because that is, uh, particularly during football season, that is one of our first uh, intersections in town. It's on Highway 29, but that is a busy intersection, particularly during all of, all of the uh, games and other activities. But uh, our plan is to have sewage at that intersection very soon. That project is underway. Uh, the utility board uh, is uh, making that project available. Let me also say that uh, we're very pleased um, to uh, see the progress still 
underway, started back now, the work on Franklin Road, where we have extended the sewer line from, uh, from uh, what's that street out there where Reverend Austin's church is, the first church? Oh, from Lane. From Monday Lane, that's yeah. right, Tom, you know the mom. From Monday Lane all the way uh, up Franklin Road uh, to what is now uh, uh, Mrs. Amelia going to Robinson. Parkway is coming, it's being extended and improved. So that will improve the sewage and water capability there. And then the other project will be getting on the way pretty soon, which calls for resurfacing the road through Tuskegee University from the corner of uh, Franklin Road through the campus to uh, St. Andrew's Church. All of that will be resurfaced. So that work is coming on and uh, we shared that information with President Jenkins today in a meeting with, with him uh, as uh, he makes the transition for the new president. We are scheduling a, a reception for the new president, I think on the 13th, here honorable council members to welcome uh, President Johnson. Um, and I'd like to, to go ahead and have you all put it in the in your calendar, we'll ask the city clerk to get the information out once we finalize everything. Remember, we had a reception for President Jenkins, where we invited the total community to come out and welcome the new president. So the transition is underway. Uh, president Jenkins indicated today that even though he is, uh, uh, will be making the transition from president, he's not leaving the board of trustees. So he'll still be actively involved in the community, and uh, he also wants to see urgent care become a reality uh, for the Tuskegee University students and the staff of the university. So we'll move now to Washington Plaza. Uh, it is now confirmed that Gibbons Sporting Goods store lease has been signed, and they will be coming, and uh, the building is being prepared for them. The Farmers Furniture um, store is confirmed, and uh, they will be coming, and the uh, shopping center uh, space is being prepared for that business as well. The one thing I talked to Pastor Winston about, uh, Council Lady Moon, is a grocery store. A, uh, uh, no reflection on our existing grocery stores. They all very nice, very fine, wonderful. However, we need a grocery store in that complex, and Pastor Winston agrees, and we've uh, introduced them to Sterling Farms uh, grocery chain, and uh, they are in negotiations, and uh, that will just cap it off, because you have, uh, even though uh, uh, one drug store is going to be relocated but, but, but the quality of life has a drugstore in the clinic, so you still have a drugstore uh, in the shopping center there. So, uh, but I mention you because of your close working relationship with Dr. Winston. So we'll, we'll move now to uh, a sky cam. One of the things, uh, honorable council members and uh, uh, citizens, we want Tuskegee to be just as recognized as anyone else. Why? Because we are the home of Tuskegee University, the pride of the swift growing south, a city that's sitting upon a hill, a city that is the birthplace of Mrs. Rosa Parks and the place where Booker T. and George Washington Carver uh, has done so much for, for this world. And in that, in that vein, I fuss all the time with Channel 12 and Channel 8 about having our name up there with Eufaula and Tallahassee and, and Auburn. I have to remind them that um, when, you, when you leave Montgomery, the next most short is a wonderful town as well. But the next big city, biggest little city in the world is Tuskegee. And uh, it should be up there on the weather chart. 
Every time there's a storm, every time someone coughs and sneezes, whatever, I want Tuskegee's name up there. You follow the Tallahassee and we Tonka, Rackville, and all that. So uh, we need to go ahead. We, we, we started to get a sky cam four years ago. We just never got around to it, but we might as we want to get one that would be on the complex here so we would get a picture of the whole town. And then uh, we'll ask the utility board to get one from eight. They can put that on the uh, uh, courthouse tower. Yeah, we're going to let you go up and put it on the show tower. <laughs> Right. Seriously, in 1976, I went up there, you know, they said, uh, when we was having, uh, Elaine, when we was having the celebration of the bicentennial, they said, uh, go to the highest place in your town and try to find a place, uh, you know, to ring the Liberty Bell, the bicentennial. So I got them to open up, and we went up to the spider webs and paints and all the way up to the top of the to the courthouse. And sure enough, at the top of the courthouse, the clock that you hear, that's a bell. That's the, that's the biggest bell in town. That's a, that's a, I don't know how they got it up there, Patrick. <laughs> but, but that's it. But uh, we want we'll, to we'll put it up high there, either on one of our, our towers. So we want to get that done. Now, we got the cable vision here. And I want to say to uh, Patrick, let's give them a hand. They're not very good. They're not seeing in yet, but they, they're coming. Not yet. But what we want to get this cable to do is so when we have a storm coming or something, we can get on and tell you, you know, what's happening. You can tie it in and you can yes. see see what's happening. So these tornadoes won't sneak up on us. And, uh, so we'll know. We have a siren, but by the time the siren goes off, you know, it's... It, it's late. So we got the cable, and we're now working on the radio station. We've got the FCC approval for a radio station for the utility board. So soon we'll have that as well, because Tuskegee's been in the dark. You can't be without communication. You've got to be able to communicate through uh, the visual and the radio. And of course, the internet uh, is, is, is another we're working on, and I asked the city manager to get with you. Board of Education. Have you noticed how a superintendent can communicate? She sends out those, and she you knows those alarms and alerts right away. So we want to be able to do the same thing in the city. Send out, uh, you know, and be an alert to all of our citizens who are who are online as much as possible. So we're in good shape there. Memorial Day. So I'd like for the city uh, to. Uh, I'm not sure what it costs. Uh, you, you can look into it, but I'd like to ask the city manager if he would look into it and then you can bring it back to the council uh, at our next meeting of Sky King. Uh, the Memorial Day fly-in, uh, mark your calendars. Uh, this year, uh, Mr. City Manager, you say we got it this year, right? Yes, sir. Okay, the city will be coordinating all of this Memorial Day fly-in. Any suggestions in your yeah, make it better. Council Lady Whitehead, you're talking. Okay, so you all, okay, great, great. All right. Airport, so it's fine. We were out at the airport the other day, the city manager and I uh, spent about five, three or four hours, I guess, going. It's a big town, isn't it? Boy, and holes in the streets, and but, but the city crews have done a good job in, in patching and fixing up a lot of streets, but there are a lot more to be done and all of these old houses and abandoned buildings and grown up lots. We've got about a hundred of them and uh, the city manager and Mr. Bowen, they got a plan of action for that. But we had a chance to see some of those, particularly over there on Greenwood, uh, on Washington Chapel, that whole area. I mean Washington Avenue. And I also rode in your area where, where they had a been having those parties situation. Uh, the city manager showed me in green talk about that area. The park looks good down there. Just got to do some additional work. I just had that at number one. Got it. Why don't you lunch, go ahead? Uh, the citizens around the Greenport area, the park, 
it's time to redo the mulch and clean the plate area out as well as get on the schedule for mowing. So I'll give that to the city manager. You got it. Okay. From the university, also, Mr. Mayor, want to take that on as a project. Glad to see over Bolden Tiller. Done that before, had some students this summer who want to take that in their project. They will uh, have some energy and I think a few dollars in about two. Okay. Yeah. And we have some interest in the development of the apartment set I'll talk to you about. Yeah, I saw it. I asked him about the old Carver Court, you know, yeah. just sitting there. We have some people who are interested. We're just trying to see how far they are. Okay. That's great. That's great. <coughs> okay. All right, well, we'll, we'll move now. Public facilities. Now, in my moving around the city, Council Lake right here, did you have anything else? No. Okay. All right. I, uh, I went to, to go to uh, the uh, place up here on North Main Street, uh, the service station, and I went in to commend them on the Facebook. Remember when they made the commitment to fix up these three service stations uh, that they own in the city? So Green Fork is one, one over by the lake, and one uh, on North Bay. A uh, guy, what's his name, the guy that owns the service hey. station? Hey. Hey. Haley, yeah, Haley. So I got, uh, when I started to go in on the door, the sign says, no public restroom. Now, come on, we've been through this. Um, so, uh, I want the council to consider passing a, uh, an ordinance requiring that any place that, that does business with the public should have a public restroom accessible for the public. If you want to uh, do business with the public, that's the least you can do, uh, is have a place. Uh, where the public uh, can, can utilize it. And even they promised to do that, and uh, I've got a couple calls in to them, so uh, Mr. Manager, if you would follow up on that for me. They were doing it. I want to find out why. Uh, Chief, you know, uh, they said uh, the reason they were doing it was because, uh, the reason they stopped it was because of the crime problem. Uh, they were, you remember when that issue came up. So uh, if you and the city manager get with them to find out, uh, if, if that's a challenge. But we want public restrooms available for the public. That's why, if you notice, we fixed up all of the restrooms in our parks, on the lake, uh, so that the public can have access. And let me make this appeal to the public now. Take care, take care of your public facilities. They are there to be used. You want them to be clean and working. If you have to use them, think about your neighbor and think about the next person. So please, we'll try to keep them stocked with uh, things like soap and tissue and that, those kinds of things. Uh, and and uh, we're not beyond that. The students were having a big party over on the lake and, and I got out to check and they had run out of so I got in my car and went to the big bear somewhere and, and brought up some toilet paper. May is not beyond that. You know, that's, we serve the public. We do what we have to do because uh, we, we are committed and we are blessed to be able to serve you. So that's what we want to do is make everyone comfortable. Next item is uh, announcements. What kind of announcements we have? Anyone have any announcements? Any uh, meetings coming up? Oh, incidentally, the one thing I told Patrick we're not seeing on our cable is enough announcements and information from the city. So the city manager, I've asked him to notify all the departments uh, these things you all are doing uh, at the lake, uh, recreation, police, uh, all of the city departments, uh, job announcements, Whatever, all of these things should be on on the television so that the public can see them. Same thing for the utilities board. Uh, that, uh, the public can, can know what's going on. Now, do we have anyone from the SGA? OK. 
Okay, that one, that's right. Graduation, boy, they, I don't blame them. I, I, they, they gone bye-bye for the moment. All right, we'll go to the city manager. Mr. Manager, you have it. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Council, Mayor, good citizens. Um, under the city manager's agenda, it's rather ambitious here tonight. Uh, I hope you'll bear with me. <laughs> Any actions we need to take? Want to take the action items? Resolutions on the foyer. Okay. Did you have the uh, uh, under street maintenance? Uh, the council got some concerns at this point. Point we we'll take those. He's still concerned about uh, Okay, Mr. Pearson lives on Main Street. He's concerned about the project that Draco is involved with across from his house. And every time he sees me, he has something to say about it because he said the sidewalk is still broken and needs to be repaired. And he says it looks like they're dumping uh, contaminated dirt. So I told him I reported it back to the city manager and the council. So, so you know about it. And he's really concerned about that. You want to know when it's going to be completed, what they're going to do. Well, he's preparing that slot to build some houses there. He has, uh, there it was kind of a lot of uh, dirt piled up, but he has smoothed it out. And he's finished his infrastructure there. And uh, he's going to fix the sidewalk when he get through with what he's doing. Now, so we have talked to him about it. Thank you. Mr. Pearson, come see us. Yes. Actually, he, he's made that report to us um, on several council meetings. I'm sorry, uh, council right here. Did you finish? Yeah, but he's been here a number of times. Yeah. Everything. He knows that that side of the street is district two. See, that's my district. The other side where he lives, I guess, is district three. So every time he sees me, he's telling me about it. Do we send them to Ms. White or have them call your office? Well, uh, once she gets the one that, that's going to oh, be there, yes. they come come to her, come to us. Okay. So they can get all the information they, they need to get from okay. us. From from her from office. Finance, or from finance. From finance. Right. Okay. Send them to finance. Yes. See, make sure that all of them have their, have their license. If, if, if they don't have a license, they come down. But if, if they got an annual license, mm -hmm. they don't have to get a license to participate. But if they uh, do not have a vendor's license, then they have to come to us to get the permit. Thank you. Okay, uh, under street maintenance, uh, I got, uh, we were working on several projects because of the storm, and uh, those projects were uh, Patterson Street, Oak Street, uh, at, uh, Oak Street, and uh, I have some pictures of the damage that the storm did to, to those areas. And uh, I talked with the, uh, the, the uh, 
county commissioner about those, and, and the state, uh, once they declare some kind of emergency that was dealing with the storm, that they would reimburse the city for any cost that they had that was related to the storm. So that's uh, Patterson Street and Oak Street. Uh, you see the, the damage that, is, that was done really undermining the street. So it, uh, you couldn't pass it. Okay, okay, you got the pictures there. And one other item I is up for consideration is the guardrails at uh, Church Street and uh, Aiden, right next to the uh, water authority there, coming down the hill. Okay. 
Thank you. 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 Which he would uh, develop a small business incubator, and uh, in, in, in that contract, he wants certain uh, twenty percent of what he uh, of an advance for the uh, his contract for the work during the year, and the amount of that is forty dollars, four thousand, forty thousand dollars. So he, he wants twenty percent of that. To establish a small business incubator. Mr. City Manager, you just need to give us a clear cut recommendation on something like that okay. at this point. So I think he is he's been here, he's met with us and individually and uh, you as well. So you give us a recommendation. But I can tell you since we started talking, the building that talking about uh, is the one that I would recommend for the medical clinic. That's a, that, that just happened since we ran into the Stonewall with the medical uh, county authority. But that building was once used as a medical clinic and it would be an ideal building uh, to be used for a 24-7 uh, medical emergency clinic. <coughs> But at any rate, you give us whatever your recommendation is, and we'll, uh, <coughs> we'll deal with it when you're ready. Okay. And if you can't use, uh, we'll make a decision what we're going to do with the building. But finding a building or any program in this city is not a problem. We have more buildings, vacant buildings, and more land that we know what to do with. The next item is the uh, drainage project on uh, Highway 8, Freeman property. Uh, that was a resolution to uh, authorize the attorney to uh, get with the attorney general to get an opinion on uh, the use of public funds on private property. So uh, they have, I'm sure the attorney has already gotten with it. Attorney General, he just got a report back. The, 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 the use of funds on developing a project that is on private property that has been, an easement has been granted on. Right. Let me make sure you point that out. Right. Uh, if I could say, just very briefly, Mr. Mayor and Mr. City Manager, uh, good evening. Uh, this actually is a resolution uh, that the council has adopted. Uh, really twofold. One was the um, concerning an attorney general's opinion so that uh, the council could feel secure uh, that there would be no uh, problem from the state at some point later about the fact that we were having to go on to the private property to cure this problem that actually started uh, as a result of the public easement that went through lives that went through there. Uh, so there's a resolution to request an attorney general's opinion. And um, the letter has already gone to the attorney general and I've uh, spoken with a uh, couple of the attorneys over there and we expect an opinion as soon as they can uh, uh, find, as soon as they can uh, prepare it and send it to us. This is just a resolution. Chairman will entertain a motion that you know, we talked about. I thought we would finish with this. But anyway, right. Chairman will entertain a motion to adopt the resolution. Mr. Mayor, it's already been done. Well, what uh, are we talking about? Oh, oh okay. Right. That's, that's already done, and that's what allowed us to send the letter you just, requesting oh, the oh, opinion. Oh, okay. You just, uh, it was just reporting. Okay. okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Next item. Okay, the next item is regarding uh, Capricorn Apartments. Uh, our garbage truck uh, 
damaged the property at Capricorn. Uh, it was their uh, ADT system, and they want us to pay them for it. So they have come up with an amount that we need to pay. Well, um, if you, you've gone through the crop seizures, yes. whatever. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. As the new vice chairman of uh, Seizures Board of Trustees, I would hope that the city would pay what's due to it. Okay. Seriously, Seizures, uh, I, I didn't realize I'm on uh, council members how much involved Seizures is in this community. And, uh, they, um, in terms of housing and development and properties, I think that's some major uh, developments in the future uh, as well that is going to benefit the total community. Uh, but the uh, point is, if we owe them, uh, let's just go ahead and pay them. How much is it? Got a price? $9,000. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's something that our trucks did. Yes. All right, why don't you get with the thousands? I always try to negotiate it. Have you? No, I'm going to give it to the insurance company. Oh, the insurance company. Okay. All right. We have insurance. Uh, go ahead. My concern is that the report indicated that the wires were hanging too low, so it wasn't our fault. And that seems to be a concern. We're again going on private property, so I would ask that the attorney advise us what to do if that was not the city's fault, if the wires were hanging too low in the first place. That's what the report indicated, and that's what you gave to us. I would think their insurance would take care of it. Well, uh, would you look into it, Mr. Attorney? I'd be happy to. I, I thought that uh, once it got on the agenda that this was a cut and dry deal, but uh, you're saying that there's some questions about it. Would you look into it? I would give it. However, so, Rob. So, but really, when you put these things on the agenda, I want you all to have these things, you know, it up one way or the other so that the council can either act yea or nay. When you leave it up to us, now we know how that is. No reflection, but I'm glad you caught that. Because uh, I'll take back my statement as <laughs> <laughs> Vice Chairman of Seizure. If was in the era, then let Seisha pay for it. But, but I thought it was a, one of those insurance things, cut and dry. Okay, go right ahead. Okay, the next item, Madam Katie, is the uh, cable channel use policy. Uh, it's in draft form. Uh, it was the attorney to finalize that. So you will have some guidelines. And guidelines. Okay. So the case, yeah. Okay. It's based upon, and you, you look at this and you have any recommendations. You have any interest in the case. Oh, okay. I think Mr. Wallace has a problem with charge at this point with the channel. In terms of uh, we are channel six at this point, the charter wants us to go to channel 181. And uh, Mr. Wallace feels that uh, it's going to cost him additional money for that to happen. And he wants to meet with charter again to see whether we can work out something. <coughs> well, you all get on the chart and you all work it out. We will. These kinds of things. Uh, yeah, you all get together on it. We'll set it up. Mr. Mayor. Yes. I'd like to ask if we go back to the council report, uh, financial report. Okay, go right ahead. We move through it rather rapidly. Uh, yeah. My concern is that we be given greater detail on a number of these items, particularly recurring items. Uh, we've got reimbursement <coughs> items in here that total, you know, uh, over eleven $1 hundred dollars. I'd like to know what the reimbursement is for, type of activities. Um, we got security fences. Doesn't identify for us where where the activity is. Um, we got some recurring transactions. I think that would be helpful if we know what those, what the details are of these recurring transactions. Have a lawsuit settlement. I'd like to know, you know, what our obligation is in that. 
how long that it, it is. Uh, contract services for what? It just says contract services. Um, a foggy machine is for. And we're going to drive that. Good. Thank you. And um, we have a Home Depot security fence. Doesn't like to know where that's going. Have a seventeen thousand dollar contract continuous. I'd like more detail on that. Uh, I think it would be helpful for the council to know, particularly these large contracts, where are they for, what is the period of time, how long will they continue, what is our obligation. Like the listing of these trucks that we keep in tires for it costs us over six thousand dollars. And um, the streets that are paved, we've paid seventy-nine thousand dollars in the streets, which is good. I'd like to know the listing of the streets. I see Josephine, but I don't see the other streets. And I'd like to pay particular and then we have renovations, nine contracting set of particular what is that? renovations. What? I don't know, it just says United Contract, United Contracting Renovations. Oh, that's at the post office. Oh, okay. Right. right. How much? How much? Sixteen thousand ninety one dollars fifteen cents. Hmm. Right. We contracted it out. Yes. Because that's our building, the post office. Uh, it's our building, we lease it to them. And uh, sometimes he's been complaining about the right. work we needed to do. But, but you're right about the contract we need to have for information. Yeah, it, it would be helpful. But the one thing I'd like to do, I'd like to start taking a look at our departments in terms of what are they generating, what are they costing us. The airport, as I said before, costs us a certain amount, and we have so much going there. Garbage situation is way up there. We continue to spend a six, eight. I think in this one alone, we spend about fourteen thousand dollars related to garbage trucks. Um, and I'm looking for a new garbage truck. Uh, we have uh, in, in that department. How much do we generate? We have the court department. I, I'd like to get more information so we can understand what does it cost us in terms of operating these departments and what are we receiving in return revenue. Oh, that would be helpful. We need to have another one of our meetings, you know, like we did last time. Yeah. Remember, we went through all of that. And, uh, yeah. so can we go again? You remember? Yeah. But we had the budget. What can we, when we get, you know, like, remember we had a yeah, meeting? Yeah, we can, and if, if we can, we can just get more detail when we get this. Because one of the things that, that concerns me, um, we talked about this contract. Our um, process is for competitive quotes. Um, it would be helpful if we look at how we're doing this so that we can strengthen it. Um, some of our vendors we keep coming to at a substantial amounts, and I think that uh, I would encourage us to look at expanding our opportunities for other vendors. Just my suggestion as we go forward and have a little more detail. Thank you. That's just the way the, the system produces that report. Okay. You can change in more detail in another manner. But the, that's the way the system, the system produces, produces this that way. report. Right. We control the system so we can make it produce whatever format you like and as much detail as you like. I think, let, let's look at the calendar. Let's do another work session. Remember, we, we took that budget and that list and we went through it last time. And, and a lot of these things were, were shared, came up, and here we are talking about them again. So that's something that we need to, uh, to deal with. So next week, following me. When's our next council meeting? What do we got next Tuesday? What's what is next Tuesday? Next Tuesday. Or but when anybody available? Next Tuesday. What date? Next Tuesday. Mr. Mayor, in lieu of time, can we just have the clerk poll us and see if we'll be available? Okay. Yeah, and then we, we can move on with the agenda. Okay. Yeah. Only other concern I'd like to ask is regarding the. Um, the reserve that we had agreed to put up at least two months ago now, three times. So I'd like to see us put a three hundred sixty-three thousand dollars in the reserve that we committed. All right. So.
I mean, unless it's been done. No, I don't think we need a motion. We've had two motions. We discussed it for two months now. And either the council has asked that this be done, I'd like to see it done, unless we have a very pressing reason it's not done. Uh, that's a very frustrating situation. And, and some things we got to move on and go on about business if we're going to be about business. We said this, we did this over and over and over, some other things, so I'd like to move on with that item if we can. Council voted on it, moved on it, we discussed it, we came back and rediscussed it. If there's any reason we're not going to do it, then let's say that, but that's not key laying something we've agreed to do. Otherwise, we as a council are functioning without any authority. Okay. Mr. Manager? So. There was some concern about who the 363,000 belonged to at first. Uh, whether it belonged to the UGT, go out to the district, or it belonged to the city. So we finally got an opinion from the attorneys right. a couple of weeks ago. Well, last week as to who it, whether it could have been the city's money or the community's money. So now we know it's the city's money, so we can go ahead and do what we need to do. Okay, uh, that was also clarified in the last meeting, as I recall, because the attorney said that, and you mentioned to us that our financial advisor said that we could do that. And, and, I, and I agree, that's just Mr. Manager, City Council, I just want us going to do what we agreed to do. That's all I'm asking for. Because when we delay these things, that takes up time. It makes it difficult in terms of our planning and looking at the budget. So I just want to move ahead and do what we committed to do. Okay. Because, so let's just go ahead and make that transaction. Okay. Because I remember I asked for the opinion. You, I gave you all, all a copy of it. Oh, yeah. And he said that it could, it, it could have gone either way, either way. But since it was the city, fine. No problem. No problem. So go ahead and on the item uh, eleven ordinance, we have drafted an ordinance for the operation of the lake and uh, we need to go through that with the attorney to finalize it. On the resolutions, what what do you what, mean? What yeah. do y'all need to go through? Next action item is uh, back to school tax holiday, August uh, 
party to the third, uh, where we will not be charging a sales tax on certain items, and those items will be in your packet also. Chair, will entertain a motion. We normally do this every year, and the rest of the state does as well. It's a good thing. Back to school, give the parents a break, or school supplies. So, Chair, will entertain a motion. I so move. Moved by Whitehead. Second. Second by the Pro Tem. Questions and comments? Those in favor of the motion, please give the sign of aye. Aye. Opposers, please give the sign of nay. Proceed. Okay, the next item is the repairs uh, to the drainage on Patterson Street. We have the information there in front of us. Uh, How much do you repair on uh, Oak Street? I have a few found bills on the Second, questions, comments that we do make the 50000 available so they can be utilized for uh, moving ahead with the Exit 38 project. Questions, comments, those in favor of the motion, give a sign of aye. Aye. is nay, so be it. And these things can be done either by the city or through a district. Okay? So if you want to do it directly, that's fine. Go ahead. Okay, uh, the county just finished the uh, construction of a E911 facility and uh, you have some agreements in there in your packet between the city of Tuskegee and the uh, sheriff department on the operation of the E911 facility, the city's participation and the county's participation. Uh, the, the way it's going to operate, our, some of our persons going to leave our police department and work for the 911 e center. Uh, that do you have a do, do, Mr. Manning, do you have a recommendation for us yes. to act on? 
Make yes. it. If you yes. would please, sir, make it. We'll act on it. I'm recommending that you accept the, uh, the, the resolution. That should be a resolution in the back from the county town. Chairman, I may entertain a motion. And the other day, uh, the man that I drove out and saw the new building going up. That's good. So, Chairman, we'll entertain a motion. So, we'll move by the pro tem. Second. Second by rule. Questions, comments, those in favor of the motion, give the sign of aye. Opposed is nay, so be it. Next recommendation. Thank you, Thank Chief. You. Next recommend, the recommendation is that uh, we have a grant application for the uh, purchase of two additional police cars with the city making a matching contribution of $30,000. Okay, quickly. Chair will entertain a motion on that. So we'll move by the pro tem. Second. Second. Questions, comments, those in favor of the motion, please give the sign of aye. Aye. Opposes nay, so be it. Motion is carried. Next item. The next item is the, the summer youth program. Uh, to announce that we will begin accepting applications for the 2014 Summer Youth Enrollment Program, SYE. Program uh, applications will only be accepted on, on Monday, May the 19th, and Friday, May the 23rd. Well, I'm, uh, that's an announcement, and I'm, I'm recommending that we uh, Put, put a budget together and come back with a recommendation on us, the cost to uh, expend for the summer program. Now, man, So, what actually you need to know? Oh, this is just information. Oh, information. So, for the public, we will have a summer youth employment program. Okay, good. Next item. Uh, I think you announced the uh, flag and uh, yeah, we talked about the Memorial Day, but we have a Tuskegee flag, which is on May 24th. Uh, Memorial Day flag. May 24th is the Tuskegee flag. Memorial Day weekend fly in. Same thing. Yeah, same Memorial Day weekend. So they fly in. We're talking about May the 24th. That's a Saturday. That's a Saturday. It's a Saturday. That's a Saturday. Uh, it's, a, it's the weekend, Mayor. It's the same thing as you're saying. Yeah. It's the weekend, weekend yeah. but it's that Saturday as you say when they fly in. Yeah, well, yeah. But the whole weekend, we just call them, yeah, whatever. So, what action do we need to take? No. Okay. Fly in. Memorial Day fly in. Not only during Memorial Day, um, it's a time for us to pause and, uh, and remember those who served our country. Remember last year, the VA used to have, well, not, oh yeah, they, they canceled that VA parade, Veterans Day parade. And so at the last minute, we put on a Veterans Day parade. Now I talked to the VA director and he thanked us for that. And I mentioned to him that we may want to uh, do something in the future that commemorates our veterans, either during Veterans Day and Memorial Day weekend. Because during that weekend, several things happen. You have the fly-in, first of all. It used to be the NAI fly-in. This time is just a fly in. That's the first thing. And secondly, uh, you have the Memorial uh, Day service at the cemeteries, starting at uh, Greenwood 
and throughout the other cemeteries where we placed flags uh, on the tombs of, of the veterans. So that's one program that's normally sponsored by the American Legion, but we, we, we support that. And then the third thing that happens during that is the checker tournament in honor of Mr. Bray. Checker and Domino's tournament. That would take place in this building. So during the Memorial Day weekend, all of these activities would take place. Okay. So please, citizens, participate, come out, and uh, enjoy yourselves in these activities. Okay, next. We have two resolutions for the pool in Springfield, Harris. We want to remember uh, George Poole Sr dedicated public servant, served our city and county well in particular. Uh, his brother, A.C. Bulls, was a member of our council. George, of course, was chairman of our county government. And uh, just uh, the entire Bulls family has a great history of service and entrepreneurship for our community and government service. And so we pause to honor him tonight funeral has already taken place. Uh, it's Jolay Jenkins. Our own Jolay Jenkins is a member of the Bulls family and a deep sympathy to you and to your entire family. The chair will entertain a motion for adoption of the resolution. So moved. Second. Moved and properly second. Questions, comments? Being none, those in favor of motion, please give a sign of aye. Aye. Opposes nay, so be it. Next motion. Uh, my dear Mrs. Grace Harris, uh, Diane and Miss Grace Harris worked with the repertory theater, uh, served at the university, I believe, uh, for many, many years, and many of you perhaps know her or know of her. A very gracious lady, very wonderful, very sweet lady. May she rest in peace to the entire family of any family members here, uh, we express our deep sympathy and uh, we now entertain a motion for an adoption of a resolution in her honor and remembrance of her. Chair will entertain a motion. So moves. Move by second. Pro Tim, second by Moon. Council Lady Moon, questions, comments? Those in favor of the motion, please give the sign of aye. Opposes nay, so be it. The motion is carried. Any other items? Okay. Yeah. Recommend to the council that we continue the application since it's been approved from Head Start that we go on with the building. It would take quite a time to uh, start all over again with that project. If we continue with what we've already started, uh, we should have this building up and ready. I'm not that thrilled about the location, but the changing of the location would be an absolute delay in the project. So I just wanted to go on record as recommending that we go ahead with the site that we have already selected. Let me see how the two of you are handling this. <laughs> That's a recommendation for me as a liaison. The council doesn't have to vote on anything. Let's see what you all are doing. We are not going to do anything. It's just a recommendation. <laughs> and I'd like to go on record as making that recommendation as liaison. Uh, it requires no action at all. Mr. Chairman, uh, I reluctantly support Gosh Holman and the Spoon's recommendation, very reluctantly, but I do support it. Uh, based on her research, uh, I really would have preferred a different location, but based on what she has uh, provided us, I support her recommendation. As part of the committee. All right. I see. <laughs> I thought I thought we were, thought lightning was going to strike. Oh no, we don't over do here. that. We don't do that. And, uh, see, I thought oh, the two no. of you. Oh no, no. Well, I'll let you all. Uh, oh, no. She I'll almost broke my arm. She almost broke. We have completed uh, that before. Thank you go. so much. Sir. Well, as chairman of the board of Head Start, I respectfully disagree. But uh, since you all want to go ahead and do that, that's fine. Uh, City Badger and I rode by that site over there the other day. It looks like a jungle. And it's over there behind the high school. I would much rather this building be downtown Tuskegee somewhere on one of the main thoroughfares. 
I disagree with uh, the head start assessment that uh, selecting another site would uh, detain the project. I am confident as the one who was able to go and get the head start program refunded when it was lost to this city. I'm confident that uh, we have a relationship with the Obama administration that we can get something done quickly. As a matter of fact, uh, I've had no problem dealing with uh, uh, Head Start. As a matter of fact, they called us once about our staff moving slow on something. But at any rate, uh, enough said, and that's what, uh, since two of you uh, uh, feel that way, and there's only two of us over here, so we wouldn't get anywhere at night by debating this. But, um, um, I just want the public to know that I would much prefer this building being uh, in, a, in, in a place that's on a major thoroughfare. Matter of fact, I, everything I can get, I want it downtown <coughs> Tuskegee, Alabama, which is dying. I want the police department downtown. I'd like to have the head start downtown. We have the opportunity to build a new Human Resources Building, the welfare building we have up there is leaking. I'd like to see that downtown. I want to, that's why we're fighting so hard to get the comprehensive health and tallacy in one location. We need places centrally located as much as possible for this little small town so that the public can have access to it as much as possible. But since uh, you all, the two of you all have Done your work. We accept your report. It has been moved in property second. And the chair will in, uh, entertain those in favor of motion. Give a sign. There's no motion. There's no motion. No motion. There's no motion. And since you made your dissertation, I'd like to say that we also discovered that the location downtown would not be approved because of the security and the safety of the children. Uh, if Mr. Mayor thinks that he can move this forward with no problems and no delay, go right ahead. I, you have no problems from right. your uh, liaison. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to call. Yeah, I'm going to call. Yeah. Now, Why you don't know, you do that? Yeah, because you know, I don't believe in never, nobody can ever tell me what I can't do. Go so right ahead. Yeah, if it's the right. Internal Revenue Service or whoever. Yeah. You know, that's, that's my record. I specialize in dealing with the feds. But anyway, uh, so let, me, let, me, let me just try to make a quick, quick call, okay, and see if we can't get this thing done. Uh, you have a location on there. Uh, oh, plenty of locations. Which one were you talking about? Downtown. It, it, it was insane. Unsafe. The one that needed security on because it's right there on the, on the strip. And let me just say this. We as a grantee must complete our physical procedure audit. Right. Mr. Carlos Jones has noted in all his audits that we have a material weakness. Now, if we want to go back and do all of that, that's yeah. fine. Well, the point is, that should have been done. As a matter of fact, I'm glad you raised that point, which points out to me. No, I'm glad you did, because, because it is clear that we are paying these people good salaries to do this work, and 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 the fact that the federal government had to call to our attention that we were late on our audit, that we had not responded to this, and this has only been going back for two or three years. And quite frankly, uh, the government was right on top of it. They, they were very cooperative. They called it to my attention as mayor of this city, and then we immediately got on the phone, got them, and they moved. And when it came time for, for us to do it, I looked around and I couldn't muster the staff. Was the city manager I was there, but the staff and the CPA, not the CPA, the accounting person, he's, he's doing the job. It makes no sense. This business is over. How much more time do we have in this administration? We have about another year and a half. That's two years. All right. Some of the things that we've been doing in this city, I do not intend to go into the next two years doing. 
some of the people that we have working for this city who are not doing their jobs, I do not intend to continue to sign checks or to pay them. We need to have an evaluation at the end of this term, and we need to put people in place who will get things done. Uh, I am just, I've, I've just reached an end. I, you know, I try to be, be nice, but don't take being nice for weakness. Uh, the people elected us to get things done, and uh, we just are going to have to going to have to, have to shape up our ship out. It's just that simple. That's exactly why we have to move forward with the project. All right, exactly. <laughs> this building should have been built three years ago. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. What you say? Yeah, I'm <laughs> uh, I'm still concerned about getting something on the lake in honor of Doug Nicholson. We'll do something like Do I need to go That's forward? a small project. I want a dog. You like it? Yeah. I like that dog. What you want to do? Can bench? I go and find a bench or something? All right. Or a bench. Yeah. Yeah. Recommend a spot. Yeah. I have a spot. All oh. right. You I take charge. I take charge. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. Yes, sir. Go uh, ahead. Completion of the city manager report. I want to thank the city manager and the city staff. The uh, city was in exceptional condition for graduation and immediately noticed that we came up to the day before graduation. I went through town, went around. It's very positive to see how good the city looked with people coming in for graduation. I do want to thank the city manager and staff for uh, the preparation for <coughs> graduation, putting us in a positive light. Great. 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 It's a great graduation. Huh? Yeah. 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 All right. What else do we have here? The city attorney's report. Make a note, uh, Madam. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just two items. First, with respect to the medical clinic board, uh, as you know, uh, council members, this case is in the middle district of the state, middle district of Alabama federal court. Uh, recently, the judge entered an order allowing the receiver to sell all of the assets of the uh, medical, well, all the assets of Salem rehab nursing facility. And that includes the building itself and then whatever else there is that's on the premises as well as the property. And that sale will occur and be a public auction on May the 30th. Uh, following that, there will be a hearing before the judge on the 31st. No, oh, excuse me, got the dates wrong. The 29th will be the auction. And then the 30th will be the hearing down in Montgomery at the Federal Courthouse, 9 o'clock for the hearing. Okay, I'll stand up. And secondly, uh, with respect to the cases that are pending, we continue to work on the litigated cases. Uh, I think we have settled, or one or two have settled over the past month, and uh, some have set the trial for uh, August uh, 2014. I have your packets and I uh, will forward them to you um, after the meeting. Okay, great. Let me announce um, the federal court. We're still in the federal court on the uh, case against the Attorney General of the state and the governor as it relates to the violating of our voting rights by closing down our gaming facilities. There will be a rally and a press conference in Montgomery at the state capitol on this coming Friday at 6 p.m. That's prior to the uh, annual meeting of the Alabama Democratic Conference. For the people of Macon County, Victory Land's closing, and you can see how they continue to, the Attorney General continues to do everything that he can to drain us economically. Now the state case that you heard about someone died and they're moving it back for three months. That's the state case. That's the state case uh, regarding Victory Land. Uh, the whole effort has been to try to just drain Macon County economically. I don't have to tell you how adversely affected we have been in terms of economics in this county because of the closing of the gaming industry. This is something that affects all of us. 
We are losing millions of dollars. I mean, millions of dollars. Um, just the other day, uh, I had to, some people take me down to lunch. I wanted to go down and see what the Indians are doing in Rotunda. And boy, I just, uh, when, when, first of all, when they saw me coming, uh, uh, they, they, they knew that I was not coming to gamble, because I don't gamble. I just uh, regulate gambling and count the money. But when, when the group that I took down to see what they were doing economically, they were shocked uh, because they were using the same machines that they use in Victory Land. Same machines, identical machines. And they're making it. And when we talked to the mayor of Tonka uh, down at, at the league, he was in the session. He was complaining about the little trailer, but he was not complaining about all the money and taxes. Uh, they are paying no taxes, but the revenue coming to the city of, of Ritonka. And yet we have Victor Land just sitting out there going to waste uh, a multi-million dollar complex. So the people of Green County have finally decided to join with uh, those of us in Macon County because we're fighting the same fight. Two weeks ago, we had a massive rally at the University of Alabama, primarily sponsored by Green County residents. This time, Macon County, it would be our opportunity to turn out, send a message to the Attorney General, send a message to the governor that it makes no sense for them to do us the way they are doing us in terms of, 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 of continuing to deny uh, us to have an equal opportunity to have our gaming industry restored. So we're in the federal court. We have appealed all of um, the, the decisions, and they're now in the 11th Circuit. And the Attorney General continues to threaten with sanctions and threaten us to try to keep us from dropping the lawsuit because they know that if we ever, if we ever get them in federal court where they'll have to swear on the oath, Bob Riley, Luther Strange, and even Governor, Governor, Governor Bentley, who said he was going to give the people an opportunity to vote on this issue, uh, has not kept his commitment. So uh, join us this uh, Friday at 6 p.m at the state capitol. We have uh, uh, Parker Griffin speaking, he's running for governor. We have um, Joe Hubbard speaking and others who will be coming to speak on this issue. We are not going to fight because in this lawsuit we're asking for them to return the millions of dollars we've lost and pay these people back the money they lost for losing their jobs. All of this is a part of this lawsuit and a part of this fight. And we're not going to give up because we are right. Attorney Gray said that when he first filed a lawsuit, Comedian versus Lightfoot, no one gave him an opportunity to be successful. But Attorney Gray is leading this lawsuit. Both junior and senior are part of this lawsuit along with all of the other lawyers. But Gomillion versus Life it went to the Supreme Court and it prevailed. Lee versus Macon uh, was another opportunity uh, that came out of Macon County because they stayed the course. But we are not going to give up and we're not going to let the Attorney General or anyone else scare us away. We're going to fight for our money and our rights. Okay, any other announcements? Okay, Chair, yes. District 2, <laughs> District 2 will have their community meeting Monday the 19th, I believe it's the third Monday, at the Comedian Building at 6 o'clock. Everybody, everybody's invited. So we, you know the meetings. Okay, Chair will entertain a motion for adjournment. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you.